great pleasure to, to, to be with you today. Uh, I have attended uh, the RC uh, event uh, several times, and uh, one uh, distinguished thing about uh, the, uh, the event that uh, the RC holds is the title that they give and the theme that they give for uh, every year really uh, reflect the important uh, topic and the, and, and the uh, emerging uh, concern that end user and the industry always have. But I always look at the, the RC event as the barometer of the industry. Thank you very much for, for, giving, uh, uh, for taking that role. Uh, a little bit about myself. My name is uh, Abdullah Khalifa. I work for Saudi Aramco Engineering Services, uh, Process and Control Systems Department. And we are the department that is the corporate entity responsible for uh, the process automation. We develop the standard, we steer the, we identify the technology, and uh, uh, try to address uh, process automation challenges. My topic today here is basically to talk about the open automation system. And uh, uh, the outline of the talk today, I will be talking about the, uh, a little bit of a history uh, where we get into here and why we are started to look at open automation system and uh, what uh, are the strategies that we developed and what is the what we identified as a long-term strategy what's the key objective of having uh, uh, such initiative and we will be talking in detail about the data centric of open automation concept what the, uh, the enabling technology that we uh, looked at and what are the industry's uh, initiative that is happening around. And specifically, we will we'll be focusing on Saudi Aramco implementation plan and what are we doing towards uh, building a pilot. Uh, and uh, we will have a summary and, and discussion. Now, uh, back in 2010, we were faced with a, with a huge challenge of obsolescence in our automation system. And the, um, uh, the, the size and the investment that is required to address obsolescence was not acceptable. So we were instructed to come up with a solution for it. So at that time, uh, talking to, to the industry and uh, uh, with the surface that provided by ARC, uh, we identified that to address the immediate need of obsolescence, we have developed four strategies to address this challenge. And basically, this challenge, although they met the objective, uh, uh, these strategies, the, the objective of it was not really to address the root cause of the obsolescence, but rather uh, uh, try to gain time in order to optimize the investment. So uh, it helped us optimize our current investment. It gave us the window. However, it is not the permanent solution for, for to address the obsolescence. So we started to look at uh, what technology provides as a solution for addressing the root cause of the of the obsolescence or, or lack of support of automation system. Now, so we would, uh, we looked at, a, at, a, at, a, at an objective that we want to have a system that will provide an inherited mechanism within the automation system that allow us to either do a partial upgrade uh, or replacement of any obsolete component without the obligation to do a full replacement of the system. So this is what we try to, to, uh, to uh, find an answer to. Now, in order to understand the problem uh, further, uh, if we look at the classical architecture of an automation system, we see that it consists of a multi-layer IOs are directly coupled and linked to the controllers, and we uh, depend on, uh, uh, on the different layers on, on operating system that is subject to, to short lifespan. 
So in, in, if we focus on one segment of the plant, we see that the obsolescence usually hit us at different levels within the architecture of automation system. The first one is the obsolescence at the I.O. level, and second at the controller level, and third at the application and the HMI. Of course, each one of those layers have a different lifespan. At the IOs, the IOs can, survive, can be uh, supported or can uh, be used for, for a longer period compared to the application uh, model. So part of this work or trying to identify what technology provide to address the root cause of the solution, it was an academic study that was done by one of our colleagues uh, during his PhD degree. And that study focused on addressing the root cause. And that study basically concluded that a data-centric architecture that eliminate the multi-layer system and providing a flat network with a real-time data bus uh, with and, have and, and physically and logically decouple the IOs from the main controller and from the, the automation system and uh, provide a control system that can be replaced by a server-based controller. All these are empowered by having a reliable uh, uh, communi open communication framework. Uh, all these together, they can uh, add, add up to give you a solution that will allow you to achieve the objective, which is uh, uh, being able or having the inherited mechanism to replace the component without the obligation to replace the whole thing. Now, one of the things that, that this study emphasized on in, to address the obsolescence of the I.O. module is basically move the control into a server-based and the IOs will be an IO that will be dedicated only to interface, to provide the electrical interface and publish the data. Uh, the, uh, and all the control will be moving at, at, a, at a high, uh, rela uh, highly available uh, 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 server. So if we look at this in detail, this basically suggests that safety system will not be touched as part of this effort. It will remain as standalone system. The I.O. modules will be an I.O. module dedicated for the function of I.O. only, and they will be connected to this real-time data bus. Now, the, the concept here, or the, the, or the proposal, is to have all this I.O. module, the controller, whether the controller is a hardware-based controller or a software-based controller, all these component, hardware and software, all of them communicate using an open communication framework. And, and what characterizes the, the fr communication framework and in order for that communication to give you the performance required to meet the process automation system is a published subscribe communication fr framework. Now, uh, this basically, uh, the, 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 the main requirement that this system try to achieve is being a data-centric using open standard published subscribe communication protocol, a real-time data bus, a server and HMI uh, that runs in a, in, a, in, a serv in a virtualized environment using a high availability computing platform, and the I.O. are interchangeable. They don't have to be from one supplier can be replaced from 
any other supplier as long as they provide the open, inter uh, open, open uh, interface. Uh, the controller can either be a hardware-based or a, soft uh, a software-based or a server-based. But what's, what's unique about all this, that all the components, whether it's a hardware or a software, each one of those components will have an open sub, uh, uh, support for an open communication. Each one of those will act either a publisher of data or a subscriber for data, uh, which basically achieve the application portability. So at any time, any piece of this component, hardware or software, got obsolete and, or need to be replaced, it's a matter of replacing it with some best in the class in the industry as long as it meet the open communication interface. Now, the, uh, uh, the, to interface with legacy system, and this is a critical point that we uh, want to have as part of the total concept, that even though we, 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 we started to address the obsolescence back on 2010. From 2010 until today, we have made a large investment on putting a new facility. So this is an, an investment that we made that we want to ensure that this investment that we are making will, will have a built-in uh, uh, capability to support open interface in the future. So what we are uh, looking at is that the current IOs that we obtain from vendors, this can also uh, work with the vendors to, to embed on them or provide on them a provision for open interface if we require to uh, do any replacement in the future. So the, the, the academic study that was done uh, with one, by one of our colleagues basically uh, uh, proposed, uh, it was done on, on, on a sim based on a simulator, okay? And basically it demonstrated that the, the, the using uh, the uh, uh, data sent uh, a public subscribe communication from framework will can meet the performance that is desired or required for a process automation application and the the open framework that was used for that academic study was based on dds communication with assigning with the implementation of the correct quality of surface, uh, the, the desired performance that is required for to meet process automation application can be achieved. Now, during this time, we were happy to learn about the work by the Open Automation Group. We joined the Open Automation Group and we started to see where we can find areas of collaboration, where can be a synergy. And uh, uh, we're committed to, 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 to work with the Open Automation. And uh, we were looking for the opportunity to, to uh, present uh, our thoughts and put it in the table for the team to make a decision and evaluate uh, the merit of what we are uh, proposing here. So our implementation plan going forward, one, one, one of, the, of the key element that is uh, included in our, our, our plan is to continue to work with the current supplier, vendors who installed a new system at our facility, 
which we want to have a, a mechanism within this to protect that investment. And the focus of this discussion is basically to explore what are the possibilities and uh, to, 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 to provide uh, a provision on the current hardware, on the current IOs that we install today in order to make them ready for the future to be, to be part of an open automation system. Uh, we're working on uh, building an in-house demo system. We try to uh, uh, complete it by the end of first quarter 2018. And uh, uh, we're trying also to, to uh, solicit uh, participation from, uh, from uh, uh, vendor, from suppliers, to be part of this uh, demo system that we will build. And at the same time, we are committed to continue to work with the Open Automation Group uh, to support uh, as much as possible. And we are using the, the demo system that we are working on in order to help us to go through the learning curve in order to be an effective participant with the Open autom Automation Group. Now, the, the concept of the system that we're trying to build in-house, which is based on uh, uh, a public subscribe uh, communication framework, in this case, we are looking at a DDS, will be basically looking at a system that will provide uh, three domains, and each domain will have a certain set of a quality of service in order to reflect application where it requires uh, high throughput, high reliability, high availability, and another domain that represents uh, data that require less uh, stringent quality of service for monitoring and control. And uh, this is, the, this is the, 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 the model that we're trying to build. And uh, what we've done so far, we, this is what we achieved. We have a small system with, uh, uh, with, with an uh, I.O. subsystem that publish data in, in, a, in a, a DDS. And we have applications that uh, interface and uh, uh, try to uh, uh, run uh, a simulated process. Uh, the objective of this is basically to, to have better uh, assessment of what it takes to, to, uh, to build a system using uh, uh, the, 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 the DDS as a, a basic communication frame, framework. And the reason why we uh, focused on DDS, we thought because we want to have a, a, the communication framework embedded within the IOs that we currently have, uh, the DDS lend itself uh, uh, in a better way uh, or, or more possible to, to be embedded within any existing. Uh, this is our thought, at least. Whether this will materialize or not, this is something that uh, we are still, still discussing. Now, based on the work that we have been doing so far, based on the learning curve that we went through, we, we started to realize that using uh, the, uh, the DDS specifically is, is not as simple as uh, a one would expect. There is a lot of work that is required, even within the, our team that, that's working on this together, we're finding that we spent a lot of man hours trying to set up the, the information model, the, the data structure. It, there is a lot of work th that need to take place up front before you start integrating component together. 
So in summary, we in Saudi Aramco are committed to support and work with the Open Automation Forum. And we're working in the prototype in order to be an effective participant uh, with the Open Automation Forum. And we believe that a data-centric, publish, subscribe uh, uh, architecture lend itself uh, better to, to uh, uh, be a collaborative uh, environment of the future and uh, it help us achieve our objective which is one of them is to preserve the current investment and provide cost effective for uh, to use standard uh, uh, of the shelf component and it will provide the inherited mechanism for partial or up any upgrade in the future. Uh, and it will allow us to select the best in a class of hardware and software in order to uh, stay away or, or uh, take us away from the uh, total replacement uh, concept that we are bracket, uh, experiencing uh, uh, nowadays. And uh, I thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I was given 20 minutes. I don't know if I exceeded that. I apologize if I did. Thank you very much.